Have you ever heard of serous otitis media? Sounds complex, but it's a common condition, especially amongst children. This condition, also known as otitis media with effusion, is characterized by the presence of fluid in the middle ear, without any signs of an acute infection. The middle ear is that little space behind the eardrum, where tiny bones transmit sound waves to our inner ear. Now imagine this space filled with fluid, and you've got a basic idea of what serous otitis media is. This condition is more prevalent in children, but it can affect adults as well if predisposing factors are present. Serous otitis media has several causes, primarily associated with the eustachian tube's dysfunction. The eustachian tube is a marvel of anatomy, and it's a key player in equalizing ear pressure and draining normal secretions. This narrow tube connects the middle ear to the back of the nose and throat, acting as a pressure equalizing valve. When we swallow, yawn, or chew, the eustachian tube opens, allowing air to flow into or out of the middle ear, thus equalizing the ear pressure with the atmospheric pressure. This process is crucial for the normal vibration of the eardrum in response to sound waves. If the eustachian tube becomes blocked due to inflammation, allergies, infections, or other conditions, it can lead to a pressure imbalance. This negative pressure can draw fluid from the surrounding tissues into the middle ear cavity, leading to the accumulation of a non-infectious fluid, referred to as an effusion. This fluid accumulation can cause the eardrum to bulge and impair its ability to vibrate properly in response to sound waves, leading to hearing difficulties, a sensation of fullness or pressure in the ear, and in some cases, balance problems. The presence of effusion can also create an environment conducive to infections, leading to acute otitis media if bacteria or viruses grow in the accumulated fluid. Proper eustachian tube function is therefore essential for the health of the middle ear and for maintaining optimal auditory performance. However, in children, this tube is shorter, narrower, and more horizontal than in adults, which makes it more prone to dysfunction and blockage. So, what can cause this dysfunction? Various factors. Upper respiratory infections can inflame and block the eustachian tube. Allergies can have the same effect. Next, adenoid hypertrophy, or enlarged adenoids can physically obstruct the tube. Exposure to tobacco smoke is another culprit, as it can irritate the tube's lining. Adenoid hypertrophy, an abnormal enlargement of the adenoids, is a common condition in children that can lead to otitis media with effusion. Adenoids, also known as pharyngeal tonsils, are small pads of lymphatic tissue located at the back of the nasopharynx, where the nose blends into the throat. They play a crucial role in the body's immune system, especially in early life, by helping to trap and destroy pathogens that enter through the nose or mouth. However, in the process of defending against infections, adenoids can become temporarily enlarged as they actively produce antibodies. In some children, this enlargement can persist due to chronic infection or an allergic reaction, leading to a condition known as adenoid hypertrophy. This persistent enlargement can obstruct the nasal passages and eustachian tubes, leading to breathing difficulties, snoring, recurrent middle ear infections, and serous otitis media. The tendency of adenoids to become enlarged in children, but not as commonly in adults, is partly because the adenoids begin to shrink after about the age of 5 to 7 years, and typically become much smaller by the teenage years, reducing their impact on breathing and ear health. When the adenoids increase in size, they can create a blockade, disrupting the function of eustachian tubes. This connection between adenoid hypertrophy and serous otitis media highlights the significance of evaluating and, if necessary, treating adenoid enlargement. This will help alleviate the symptoms and prevent the recurrence of serous otitis media. Certain tumors of the nasopharynx can cause serous otitis media. One of them is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, a benign tumor that commonly affects adolescent males and can present with symptoms such as nasal obstruction and serous otitis media due to its proximity to the eustachian tube. Additionally, malignant tumors like nasopharyngeal carcinoma might also contribute to the development of serous otitis media. While serous otitis media is a condition that can be managed, its association with nasopharyngeal tumors underscores the importance of comprehensive evaluation and treatment of underlying causes. All these conditions prevent the normal drainage of fluid from the middle ear. And it's this fluid buildup that defines serous otitis media. Serous otitis media can often go unnoticed due to its subtle symptoms. This condition may present itself in a variety of ways, all of which could subtly impact a patient's daily life without raising immediate alarm. For instance, 
one might experience muffled hearing, the sensation that the ear is clogged or full, often described as feeling like being underwater. While less common than in acute otitis media, some may experience a dull pain or discomfort due to the pressure of fluid against the eardrum. It's worth noting that these changes can be tough for young children to articulate, so it's important to be observant of signs of the symptom. It's also possible for balance problems, dizziness or clumsiness to occur, due to the effect of fluid on the inner ear structures that help control balance. Behavioral changes or irritability might also surface due to discomfort or difficulty hearing. And let's not forget, academic performance issues could also emerge, often related to hearing difficulties. Now, on to detection. Diagnosis of serous otitis media typically involves a medical history review and a thorough physical examination by an ENT doctor. Diagnostic tests include otoscopy, where the doctor examines the ear with an otoscope to visualize the eardrum and check for fluid presence. Tympanometry measures the movement of the eardrum in response to air pressure, indicating fluid in the middle ear, type B tympanogram. Finally, audiometry usually shows mild to moderate conductive hearing loss due to fluid accumulation that dampens the movement of the eardrum and ossicles. Early detection of serous otitis media can prevent long-term impact on a child's hearing ability and overall well-being. Treating serous otitis media is possible and often straightforward, with a focus on managing the underlying causes. Many cases of serous otitis media resolve spontaneously within a few weeks to months. Regular monitoring is essential during this period. The therapy of serous otitis media aims to alleviate symptoms, improve eustachian tube function, and prevent complications such as hearing loss. The most important consideration for treating this condition is to address the root causes. For instance, if allergies are a contributing factor, managing these allergies through medications or lifestyle changes could alleviate the symptoms of serous otitis media. Medical management. Nasal steroids and antihistamines may be prescribed to reduce nasal congestion and inflammation, improving eustachian tube function. However, these medications should be used with caution due to their potential side effects. Encouraging children to perform auto-inflation exercises, which involve blowing with the nose and mouth closed to open the eustachian tube and promote fluid drainage, can be effective in some cases. In cases where fluid persists for more than three months, or if significant hearing loss or speech development issues are present, the ENT doctor may recommend performing a tympanostomy. During this procedure, a small incision is made in the eardrum to drain any fluid present and relieve pressure from the middle ear. A tiny tube, often referred to as an ear tube or tympanostomy tube, is then inserted into the incision to ventilate the middle ear and prevent further fluid accumulation. This tube typically remains in place for several months and usually falls out on its own as the eardrum heals. Tympanostomy can significantly improve hearing, reduce the frequency of ear infections, and alleviate associated symptoms like discomfort and balance problems. Recent updates to clinical practice guidelines emphasize a more individualized approach to treatment, recommending watchful waiting in many cases of serous otitis media without severe symptoms or risk factors for developmental delays. The guidelines also support the use of tympanometry and audiometry to monitor fluid presence and hearing status over time, guiding the need for intervention. The updated guidelines of the American Academy of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Surgery Foundation for Tympanostomy Tube Placement in Children represent a significant step toward ensuring that children receive the most appropriate, evidence-based care for chronic ear infections and fluid accumulation. By establishing clear criteria for surgery, the guidelines help protect children from unnecessary procedures while ensuring that those who can benefit from tympanostomy tubes receive timely intervention. As research continues and practices evolve, the focus remains on optimizing child health outcomes, reducing the burden of ear infections on children and their families, and promoting effective, efficient healthcare practices. For parents navigating the decision about tympanostomy tubes for their child, these guidelines offer a framework for discussions with healthcare providers, ensuring that any intervention aligns with the best available evidence. As always, consulting with a qualified pediatric ENT specialist is crucial for making informed decisions about the best approach to managing chronic ear infections and related conditions in children. Preventive measures for serous otitis. Media focus on reducing risk factors and promoting eustachian tube function. Treatment of all underlying conditions, including adenoid hypertrophy. Manage allergies effectively. 
avoid exposure to tobacco smoke and pollutants, encourage hand hygiene to reduce the spread of respiratory infections. Breastfeeding has been shown to lower the risk of otitis media in infancy. In conclusion, serous otitis media is a condition that, while often mild, can have significant implications for a child's hearing and development. Early detection, appropriate management, and preventive measures are key to minimizing its impact. Parents and caregivers should consult with healthcare professionals if they suspect their child may be experiencing symptoms of middle ear effusion to ensure timely and effective treatment. Remember, early detection and treatment are key to preventing potential complications such as hearing loss or speech delay. Therefore, regular checkups and prompt attention to symptoms are crucial. With the right knowledge and approach, managing serous otitis media can become a less daunting task. If you found this video informative and helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.